Hello everyone, welcome back to another Lele Crafting video. My name is David and today we'll be doing something very different from our previous videos. Today we're going to be doing a sci-fi floor panel completely made out of leather. I got the inspiration to make this project from a plastic panel I made a while ago. This white panel was made using styrene only and is completely made by hand. There's no laser cutting or 3D printing parts and so I thought it would be an interesting project to make it out of leather and see how it works. So if you want to know how you can make this kind of projects and see how leather behaves while doing so overall, make sure to watch till the end of the video since I'll try to be very detailed in the process of this project. Also if you wish to craft this panel yourself, I'll leave you a link to where you can download the pattern absolutely free. So to begin with I designed a template that can be comfortably used over leather since the template for the plastic version didn't leave enough room for the stitching holes. And this was crucial to start with since I wanted the panel stitched and not only glued. So once I got the template ready, I went on and cut a large piece of grey leather and glued it to some vegetable tan leather I had. This is going to make the panel considerably thick, but it also helps me have more control over this top section of the panel. To glue both parts together, I used some contact glue and applied it to the back sides of both leathers and then added some weight to them and let them rest for a few minutes, around 20 minutes is good. And while we wait for the glue to dry and move forward, I just wanted to tell you that if you're into leather crafting and wish to see more fun do-it-yourself projects, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. I post videos on leather working projects, leather pro reviews and more. And now the back part. For this piece I used another kind of leather which is vegetable tan in black color and did exactly the same as with the front one but this time I glued it to some black pigskin just to keep the entire panel lined and protected from underneath. Now since the back piece is much easier to work with I decided to start working on the details on this part and to begin with I taped the corresponding template to the leather and immediately marked with scratch out the four edges of the panel. Since this is a shiny vegetable tan leather, any scratch or mark is extremely visible, so making this will help me draw a straight line between the dots and cut the piece as you'll see later on. Now besides the stitching holes, this part has four dotted details and to do them I use my engraving pen. Now you may have seen this tool a lot of times before in other videos and that's because I use it as an edge paint applicator, as you can tell. But the truth is that this is not an applicator, this is actually an engraving pen. So technically for this video it's been really used for its purpose. So to make the dotted details you just need to press the pen over the leather until it marks well. And if you're actually pressing it with your finger right on top, it can start hardening after a while, so it's always good to use a small piece of leather to press the pen. Now another thing is, you don't want to apply a lot of pressure to the pen, just enough to mark the spot. And now the stitching holes. And to make them, I used two prong round chisels and a poly mallet and just went on to perforate all the holes in the piece.
When you're absolutely sure there's nothing left to punch or mark, you can remove the template from the leather. And this is one of the most satisfying things to do. After removing the template, you can remark any details with your engraving pen and cut out the rectangle with a cutting ruler and leather knife. In this case, I'm using an X-Acto knife and it works perfectly fine as long as the blade is well sharpened. It's going to do a good job. Now this layer is thick, so I had to pass the knife several times to ensure a clean cut. Otherwise, I run the risk of bending the leather on the edges if applying too much pressure. And after the rectangle is completely cut out, it's time to paint the edges. For this, I'm using a vernis heatable edge paint and I apply three coats of paint on every side. The first coat dries relatively quick, however the second and third ones will take some time to dry out, so just be patient and you can work in something else while you wait for the paint to completely dry. So to work with the upper side we need to follow the same methods we used in the first one, however this part has a lot of curved and angled sides as you can tell from the template. And on the edges of the rectangle that won't be any problem since uh, we can just cut out the rectangle and then round the edges, but the details on the sides have several angles that we need to take care of.
Now comes the interesting part, we need to cut out the rounded sections on the panel first. To do this I'm using a single hole puncher and began to punch the rounded inner edges of the leather. And in total there should be 8 punches and once we're done we can remove the template from the leather. It's always important to double check we're not missing anything before doing so. So after remarking some detail with the engraving pen, I went on and cut out the small sections of the large sides. I first cut out the horizontal lines that connected the holes I did previously with the hole puncher and then cut out a straight line guiding myself with the points I made with my scratch all to have the right cutting angle for these parts as you can see. When the entire rectangle has been cut out, we need to sand off any excess of fiber left in the sides. This can happen because while cutting a straight line or the rounded parts, we might leave a small amount of leather that won't make our cuts look as tangent as we'd like. So if this is the case, I suggest you sand out these parts before painting them. Now for the inner details of the panel, I used a leather creaser, which is this one you see here, and since I don't have my plastic ruler at hand, I went on and cut out a straight piece of styrene to use it as a guide when applying pressure with the creaser. And as you can see, it actually makes a good job in guiding the tool over the leather. However, as this is not as strong as a plastic ruler, I need to go slowly and mark the details a few times after using the plastic guide. So you can tell here I unfortunately passed the limit of the first section to the next one, but since I'm still going to mark the lines later on, this will hide this mistake slightly. When it came time to remark the dots on the leather, this particular piece doesn't mark as strong as the first one, so I need to apply more force with the engraving pen. However, I was hesitant to do so after a while because I didn't want it to harm the tool. I know these are strong tools, but they can only resist so much, so I did felt I was applying a lot of pressure to make sure the final details were visible. So instead of risking it, I decided to use another scratch awl I had with a very strong and sharp point. I don't normally use this awl because it's incredibly heavy. I love how it's crafted and I have it more as a collection tool than anything else because it's really heavy and to be honest I got used to work with the small one instead. That small red scratch all I bought it about 8 years ago and it's still standing. 
it's light and easy to use, but in this case I'll use the large one just because it has a stronger metal tip. So to round the edges, I used a 50 cent peso coin from Mexico and my exacto knife. Now a huge tip I suggest you do when cutting round edges is to cut tiny straight lines instead of a continuous curved line. You have much more control with the straight lines while you apply pressure to your rounding tool or coin in this case and you can always sand out any excess of leather left in that section. To paint the edges for this project, I used a different kind of paint. This time I went on with the Angelus acrylic paint. It is way thicker than normal edge paint, but since the grey one was very similar to the color of the leather, I decided to use that instead. Good thing about the Angelus paint is that it comes with a tiny brush and you can apply it comfortably on small surfaces like this edge. Another thing about this acrylic paint is that it dries relatively quick in comparison to the second and third coat of the heatable edge paint I used for the black part, so it saved me quite some time to then start stitching both parts together. However, this paint did leave the edges slightly rough, so to even them a little, I used some Tokonole burnishing gum and polished the edges with a small piece of canvas. Finally, it came time to stitch both parts together, and to do this I used a polyester thread from Ritza25, also known as Tiger Thread, in space color. I had this small spool sitting there with the other threads, just looking how the other ones were used, and finally it came the day to shine, and it actually worked pretty good. I measured the total length of the stitching run for this project and multiplied the number by 5, since it was very thick layer to stitch. So I did use a lot of thread, but I was very happy with the final results. To stitch both parts together I didn't use any glue, instead went on to clamp both pieces together and started saddle stitching right at the corner of the panel.
When I finished, I simply put out the excess and had the panel ready. Overall, I enjoyed making this project and wanted to do it for a while now and the day finally came. And friends, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video and find it useful. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and share it so it can reach more people. Also, if you're into leather crafting, I invite you to subscribe to my channel where I post videos on many leather crafting projects such as this one and everyday products. If you wish to make this panel yourself, you can download the template from the link I leave you in the description. This panel is absolutely free and you can have a lot of fun and learning experience while crafting it. If you're working with it and have some doubts about it, don't hesitate to write me your questions in the comment section below, I'll be more than happy to help you. Again friends, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.